police officer friend is trying to tell you to come work with me. Really? Mm -hmm. So they're all going to be in the work with you. Wow. Well, he's got good two, good two teachers. He does, and I don't understand and I have no knowledge. So, and they get along very well. Uh -huh. and so, it was, it was pretty interesting. It's just to see how life turned out. Uh -huh. But he was a good friend, but it was... But he's still young, so that's good. Yeah, he's seven. So, and it's so the first grade, and I was giving up at ten things, and he wasn't able to tell me where he did it. But you can't do this without you. No. It's not worth it. You're not going to know my mom. And also, if you think about it, I mean, things are bad enough. The things could get worse. Mm -hmm. uh, could get a lot worse. Mm -hmm. And you pull up, and you're not pull up. And you're with your three parents at home. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not even fighting with anybody. You're a good guy, too, but it's like, <coughs> what do you do? I know. So you got to leave them. They said, well, it's a nanny. So, you know that. <laughs> it's a tie. It's very nice. It's just a tie. <laughs> so, that's kind of the new... I can work the right thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, my dad would be proud. My father would be proud of my boys. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
please take your hymnals and turn to page 47. Page 47. Jesus and me. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 47. I travel the I don't want you to get in the habit of, hey, wait a minute, he didn't pray. We're, don't get in a rut. Don't get in a rut. Ephesians chapter 1. Pray for my wife. We had a big fight this morning. She didn't want to come. She's sick in bed. I told her to snap out of it. She's not listening. I know the cure. She just won't do it. Apple cider vinegar. Rub it on your face. Pour it down your throat. Snort it up your nose. I'm telling you. God's gift to mankind. I mean, you think you're almost dying, but it, it helps you. I've been drinking it like mad. Trying to keep the cooties away. Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 4, verse 4. That verse says, according, if you've read further on, you're not right with God. According. That means how does it pertain to us? It's not just written. Notice it says, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Is that not an amazing statement? that God chose us before he made the world? We ought to choose him. Anybody home? It, it ought not even be an issue. We ought to, several things, we ought never get over it. Glad I'm saved. Glad I'm not lost. And God didn't just save me. We always go, oh, I'm so glad I'm going to heaven. He thought about us before he made anything else. See verse 4, according. That means that that's supposed to affect us. 
We live according to that rule. We, we think according to that principle, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. I'm not really sure what the foundation of the world is. But I know it's before he did anything. He chose us. Have you chosen him? Every day, every moment. Thank you, God, for choosing me. Thank you for thinking of me before you thought of anything else. See, you and I should read that and go, wow, I don't even get that. We don't. That's why he says, according. Not according to how you feel. Not according to what you think. But according to what he is, he's done, and what's true. According, look, according as he hath chosen us. He's God. I don't question God. When God said, call on me and I'll save you, I never said, you know, I don't agree with that. I just knew that's what I needed. I was trying, nothing else worked. So I'm a Christian because he chose me. And I live, notice verse 4, that we should be. That we should be. Go back to the first word, according. If he chose us, we can be whatever he wants us to be. He didn't choose us and go, man, did I choose a bunch of losers. There are some Christians, though, that make God look like a loser. I'm sorry. I know you're not ready. I know it's too early for the truth. But the truth is, he chose us because he knows what we can be. He knows what he can make us. That we, verse 4, that we should be holy. I know what that means, do you? And without blame. Without blame. And then he adds, before him in love. Not in love with us, in love with him. Don't you love that he loves you? That ought to motivate you and compel you. He loved you before the foundation of the world. I, I'm not, I don't know what that means, but I know what it means. He loves me. He chose me. I'm supposed to be everything he wants me to be. Pastor, I'm just having a hard time. Well, take it to God. Don't bring it to me. I can't, you know, boop, poof, zap. You need to just get with him and say, help me, God. Help me. You chose me. I'm supposed to be holy without blame. Without blame, what's that mean? There ought not be anything that people can grab onto you and say, yeah, you don't look holy. That's why we ought to go just above a little bit. We ought to go a, a little beyond Watch me. I know it's too early for preaching, and we're going to have Sunday school. There's nothing wrong with being just a little bit better than we think we ought to be. Why? According. If you line up what he's done for us, and you line up what we've done for him, what will it look like? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I want your word to be preeminent in my life. I only know you because of your word. I only know what you want because you said it and I read it. I only know what you did for me because I read it. Lord, I know that I can look out and see everything and go, oh, there must be a God. But I'm glad you said faith cometh by hearing. You didn't say it came by seeing. You said it comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. 
So we've read today, we've heard today that you chose us before you chose anything else. You chose us. You didn't need us. You chose us. Because you want us. And I pray that we would look like we want you. I pray it wouldn't be, oh, it's Sunday. I have to go to church. I got to go to church. I, I have to worship God. We get to according. According as he. It could have just said he has chosen us before the foundation of the world. And all of us would go, wow, isn't that great? But you added that word according. Our lives ought to be reflective of what you've done, according. We live based upon what you said, what you've done, what you told us, what, what you have uh, commanded. You said that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. I pray my love for you will increase today. I know it can. There's no way that my love for you is what it ought to be. God, and if there's anybody here in this room, if there's anybody listening by live stream that thinks, oh, no, I'm right where I ought to be. God, would you just give them a holy shake and cause them to see that, yeah, we agree. Oh, I, I know that. I know that God chose me before anything else before the foundation of the world but God we better be we better be we better be living according to that for the sake of this world you don't need it I mean it makes you look good and you want that but this world needs to see God they need to be confronted with God. They need their lives and their sin and their evil and their lostness to be exposed by the light of God, by the light of God's presence. David said, as the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. May we desire you like we've never desired you before. May we want you, cling to you, and love you like never before. May our lives change because of our desire, because of our longing for you, for your presence. Knock us out of our lukewarmness. Knock us out of our, I'm okay. Knock, a, knock us out of our, I'm satisfied where I'm at. God, challenge us. Challenge these kids. Use these teachers to challenge these kids. Challenge the teenagers. Thank you that you would do what you've done for us. We want to live according to that. We don't want to live according to what someone else thinks. We don't want to live according to anything but what you've done, according as he has chosen us before the foundation of the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless our day. Open our ears. Open our hearts. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. time to recognize the birthdays and anniversaries for this week and I don't see any so I'm just going to ask does anybody have any birthdays this week all right any anniversaries I don't think that's ever happened before I'm not sure never never page 55 in your hymnals he is mine page 55 Designed the master plan. He exchanged the sinner for the sinless one. Jesus left his throne on high, came to earth to bleed and die. He said, Father, not my will, but thine be done. He is mine. Bye.
113 for our course of the month following Jesus. We're in a hurry, hurry, Matthew 18, hurry, Matthew. Oh, take your time, God doesn't care. Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter, pray for Pat Sheets. She is in the hospital. Her and John had a big fight. He got her right in the nose. That sounds better, doesn't it, than, you know, more exciting. She is her typical water on the lungs and issues, so pray for her. She went in yesterday, last night, John. They want to keep her a few days, so pray for her. And there are others sick. You can pray for Amy if you want. But poor girl, I, I need her. Matthew 18, house is falling apart, dirty dishes everywhere. I had to wear the same clothes I wore last week. Matthew 18, not really. She said this morning from me, you want me to iron for you? I said, no, I, I look dumb, but I think I can handle it. Matthew 18, Matthew 18. I just iron the front. She irons the back. Nobody sees the back, you know, right? See the back of my shirt? Nope. She irons it, does all this. It's like, don't worry about it. But God sees it, so. Matthew 18, tell it to the church. Tell it to the church. There's going to be times, hopefully not many, but there are going to be times when people don't act right. Do you ever hear about a church member not acting right? <laughs> Doesn't see, it happens. We all, right? Preachers. I heard about a couple preachers this week. One of the reasons that you and I ought to pray for preachers is because they're a big target. I, I want you to understand that. We're not a special group. But we're, we're, a big, uh, we're a major target. So we need to pray for each other hard. Hey? Hard. Because the devil's do it. Man, he, he knows that. I don't know if you know it, but he's sneaky. He doesn't fight fair. If you go, hey, whoa, 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 wait, that's right when he slaps you. So we have to be sober, be vigilant. Vigilant means always watching. And Christians, Christians just get thrown at, you know, wow. Matthew 18, let, let's read these verses. And then, I, honestly, I hope we make it. We should. We should. We're up to the three points. So we're going to, if you, we have some more, if you need a handout, I want you to have a handout. Even if you fill it out just while we're learning it and then throw it away, it helps lock some things in your head when you jot notes and write. I always do that. I try when I listen to a sermon, I write down things, take notes. I don't, I won't, I don't, I don't write other sermons. Preachers come here and they leave and go, man, thanks, you gave me a sermon. It's like, I didn't come here to give you a sermon. Or you didn't come here to give, I mean, give you a sermon. 
I thought you came because you needed God to speak to you. If you need sermons, I'll send you some. You come to church, we're coming to worship God. Hey, listen to me. And preachers about they said, Are we serious about that? I go, I don't know if you but some of this stuff is wild nuts, but you're welcome to anything I have. It's Matthew 18. Tell it to the church. What do you tell the church? You tell the church that someone's not acting right, they're not representing the Lord right. They need to be dealt with. Look at verse, we'll start. Can we verse 15? Moreover, moreover, moreover. Moreover, it's only once in your Bible, but it should have been there 14 times. Moreover, meaning it needs to be practiced more than we're practicing it. Over more, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Notice verse 15, moreover. That is a plea to practice this, to go over and do more, not, not, well, you know what? Our goal is to help them. My goal is to help you. My goal is not, if I'm mad at you, I won't come. I mean, if you wonder, why isn't he here? It's because I'm mad at you. If, if I'm here and I'm yelling, I'm not mad. I'm taking the time to help you all I can. And pick a word. Some would pick out of control. Pick passionate. I, I, want, I want to help you. And if you're not worth helping, I'm not coming. So if I'm coming and you go, well, he was quite in the mood today. You ought to stop and say, thank you, Lord. I'm trying to help you. Right? I mean, come on. Moreover, we ought to care about our brother. Not care about being right. We ought to care about making things right. There should be no friction. Uh, all this, you know, I, I thought, and you know, I'm sorry. I'd rather hear you say something than you send me an emoji. So everybody know what an emoji is? They can be taken wrong. But if we're talking, we go, wait, 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 are you, are you okay? Yeah, and you can tell. Come on, we're grown-ups. But sometimes you just send words or you send pictures. And, I, you know, I still think LOL means uh, lots of love. I, I mean, I haven't kept up. Some of these, I'm asking Amy, what's BTW? I, I don't know. I, well, I just, I grew up, we had to talk. We had to write. The nuns made me learn cursive. They smacked our hands. Printing, oh, printing's offensive. Printing's too hard on a child. No wonder our country is such a mess. May we need just a bunch of nuns in the public school. Hey, we didn't get away with anything. I'm telling you. Hey, they're dressed in black. They're not dressed in white. They got that big old crucifix hanging from their waist. Double duty. Show God and show you. We've been smacked with one of those. I mean, big heavy. I'm telling you, when I was a kid, they're a big solid and pointers. Hey, most classes I was in, the nuns had a closet full, just a big box full of pointers for every one that broke. They'd go to the closet and grab another one. 
pointers. Remember pointers? Solid wood point for the, on the board. Yeah. Ever been hit with one? I have. So you were just a criminal when you were young. No, I was lost. I remember sitting, turning this way. And I heard the loudest snap I've ever heard. She smacked my book or smacked my desk. And I wasn't paying attention. That gets your attention. And that was a threat. That was the next coming, the next one's coming for you, big boy. I mean, the nuns didn't say that, but I knew that's what they meant. That's kind of what he's trying to prevent here. He's trying to get us to make everything. He's trying to get us to put out, you've heard me give this analogy, a little fire is easier to put out than a big fire. If you're sitting at your table and there's a little fire on the table, just a little round Oreo-sized, why would I pick an Oreo? Oreo-sized fire, you can pat it out or it's easy to control. But when they get bigger, they're harder. That Verse 15 is dealing with controlling discipline, controlling fires in the church. Verse 16, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So I'm taking that twofold. I'm taking that where I told you last week, if I have a problem and I grab someone, they may say, you know, maybe I ought to let this go. Is this worth fussing about? Or they may say, yeah, you know what? I'm glad that you care. Let's approach them, see what they say. So you go to them and, you know, that's always intimidating, right? Can you see me showing up at your door, me and someone else? And, and you're not thinking, oh, sit down. So you have to be careful how you do this. I, I don't think he's just throwing it out there. I think prior to this, there's a lot of the teaching that our Lord gave that he's assuming we're practicing. Right? Told us to love, told us, you know, to be, be Sermon on the Mount, poor in spirit, not proud in spirit. Blessed are they that are poor in spirit. Like, man, I hate to bring this to you, but I'm just wondering, you know, it looks like blah, blah, blah. And it may be a misunderstanding. I had a guy called me one time. He wanted a meeting. I said, we're not interested right now. I ran into him. He said, do you remember me? And I said, yeah. <clears throat> he said, remember I called you and asked for a meeting? I said, yeah. He goes, what's your problem? I go, I don't have a problem. Do you? Yeah, I have a problem. You didn't have me for a meeting. I said, well, now I know why I didn't. I ran into him again later. He said, would you please forgive me? I said, you okay? What's going on? Yeah, I just something, something, something. You know, every, right? Doesn't everybody, everybody have a bad day? Sometimes you say things you shouldn't say. Don't act like, oh, I would never do that. Really? We think them. He said, verse 17, and if he shall neglect, notice it goes from not hearing to neglect. If he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church to pray. God said, right, my house should be called house of prayer. We should be praying. Do you hear about so and so? And then we spread it. We ought to be praying. I'm never offended. If someone says, Oh, God's really laid you on my heart, I don't go stop. I'll take all the prayer I can get. 
I've had preachers, I've told preachers, hey, I'm praying for you. What for? And so I respond. Sometimes I respond, your guilty conscience. Do you need prayer? Yeah. I had someone tell me this week, here with my, this is interesting. Uh, boy, I got to be careful. Uh, interesting call. Uh, politician. Um, they said, I, I sent someone, I, I gave some, I, I'm calling you now because I realized after I did it, I gave them your number that they could call you. I said, no, that's okay. I was surprised they had my number. See, that's scary. So then they explained to me, I could tell this person needed help. But I also knew this person needed to be saved. So I told them, your problem is you're not saved. And if you'd like to, I could show you what the Bible says. And they led them to the Lord right there. I said, man, that's great. They said, well, I'm not a very good Christian. I, I don't have any, but I knew. And they went on and kind of bad mouth. I said, you know what? You know what a good Christian is? No, what? A Christian that realizes they're not a good Christian. Huh, never thought of that. I mean, I'm glad a whole bunch of you don't go, I am a good Christian. Look at me, look at me. I'm not. Look at me, look at me, look at me. But I want to be. But if he, verse 17, but if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, you say, you know what? These last two weeks, you've taken a lot of time on the scriptures. Look at me. I'm not apologizing for that. Say, but we know some of this, do you? You're repeating yourself, am I? You never go wrong with the scriptures, man. Verily, verse 18. Verily I say to you, heathen man and a publican. I, here's my take on that. Maybe they're lost. Hebrews 12 says that if you're a son of God, he chastises you. Why? Hebrews 12, for righteousness and holiness. If, if you're not responding, maybe you're heathen. Is it possible for someone to be lost that's a member of a church? It's not a trick question. Maybe we should pray for their salvation. Maybe we should be, and you go, whoa, they might get offended. That's okay. I mean, if you're lost, you kind of want to know it now. And maybe they are. It's possible. It's possible to think you're saved and not be saved. So you try to scare us? Yes. You know, we're so afraid. Oh, we don't want people to doubt their salvation. Hey, if you can doubt it, you need to take care of it. We act like, oh, you got to be careful. You're trying to get, I'm not trying to get numbers. I'm trying to get people saved. And I'm trying to get people who think they're saved, who aren't saved, saved. Don't, don't act like, oh, you know, we're not supposed to do that. Who said? I mean, you imagine if Jesus was here? He wouldn't go, I don't want you all to feel bad. Let me tell you what he said. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way. Don't you think people are sitting there going, wait, 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 straight, whoa, 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 narrow, what? Wait, is he saying we could be lost? Yeah. Say, do you question, Pastor, do you question some people their salvation? Absolutely. Well, you're not supposed to be judgmental. What, what are your sins? I, yes, I am judgmental. 
says, judge not that you be not judged. It doesn't say judge not. If I judge your salvation, it means you ought to be able to judge mine. I'm just saying, based upon all this, we have a right to assume if you're not living saved that you're not saved. Now we don't, you know that. Look, everybody in this room knows we don't do that. We don't, that, that's not our, what, we just want to make everybody doubt. I'm not trying to make you doubt. I'm just saying if, if Christ is in you, we ought to know it. I'm not talking about stumbling once in a while. Notice it says he will not hear, he neglects the church. He doesn't need the church. We, no, we need it. No doubt he closes this. Verse 18, whatsoever you shall, verily I say to you, truly, this is the truth, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So I, you know what, we use that verse out of context. But the context in this case is, doesn't matter to me. This is my application. This is not my interpretation. No matter how big the church is, you can have problems. And, and according to verse 20, this is a church matter. This isn't, well, we meet my home. That's not a church. Come on now. Yeah, but I go to this. Bible study, that's not a church. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not finding those. I'm finding church. I'm finding, verse 17, tell it under the church. Don't tell the neighborhood. Don't tell the leader. Don't tell the guy that owns that. Tell it in the church. We're all, he assumes we're all connected to the church. I'm going to talk about the church. That's you. I'm talking about lo, this church. So if you are a member, we're holding you accountable. You say, I don't like that. I, you know what I think you should do? Change your ways. Don't leave. Pray with me. Father, thank you for this time. I want it to be a help. And, and it's a touchy subject, but it's a subject ought to be dealt with and thought about. Help us. Help us to see it. Like you want us to see it, not just say, well, I never heard that. I was never taught that. And, Lord, it could be that we never heard it because we never heard it. And if we're hearing it now, that may be the case. So help us see all of this your way. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. But real quick, real quick. Jesus came to save us. He didn't come just to save us and leave us set there. He came Put us in a place that will help us. That will, you know, when I hear stories about people being born at home, that I'm like, wow. You know, I don't know, maybe your grandparents were, I don't even know, I don't even remember. I don't know, but I, my mom and dad were, I was born in a hospital. I wasn't just, you know, hey, you know, go over there by the kitchen table, we're going to have a baby and You know, we just kind of feel like they need a name, they need to belong, everything needs to be done right. We as a local church are responsible. When you come in, if you've done this in another church or done in our church, when you get in that water, that water says, I'm a new person. I'm dying to being lost and I'm living under God. And you ought to act like it. I mean, we struggle with that. I, I struggle to act, think, say, be, do what I should. We point out the way you should go. 
I don't like that one. I don't know what to tell you. I don't like them either, but that's what I should be doing. If I'm challenged about something and I don't like it, that it's not whether I like it or not. Do I need, is that in the Bible? Is that what I need? Yes, that's what I need. So, three things. We got to go. We got to go. Three things. I want to keep going back, but we'll, we'll hit it. Number one, you, you have on your sheet, sin in the church is a, and the finish to that is sin in the church is a family matter. When one of my kids got in trouble, I never spanked one of the other ones and said, go tell your brother you got a spanking for him. Tell them why you're crying. Because they did wrong, but you got to spank. No. We, we always dealt with the guilty party. And the guilty party always said, it wasn't me. Who was it? It was them. And I go to them. Who was it? Not me. Who was it? The other them. We're running out of them. And once in a while that happens. So then you just go, look, I don't know what else to do. None of you are admitting this. Only solution? Y'all bend over. That helps them. That does something to them that causes them to be honest. Because I said, you know what? If we have to do this every time one of you does something, and I don't know who it is, we'll do it. And pretty soon, I mean, either they start tattling or they start getting honest because it's going to happen. I've won it. Ever been in a store and a kid was misbehaving? You want to tap the mother on the shoulder and say, I can help you with this. Right? Screaming, eating. She's, she's ripping. I see him ripping open things. You know, giving it, rewarding the kid for bad behavior. Man, that's the kind of mom I want. Right? Why, why would you not want that? Rah, rah, here, have another butter. Man, my, it's my kind of living. They're screaming, ah! and then, you know, and then this one, have you ever done this? I'm not going to tell you again. I'm not, I'm not, I said, and I want to go up and say, I've been counting. I don't discipline other people's kids. I don't expect them to live by the rules in my house. Here's what's up. In our church, this isn't, if you're not a member here, you're a member not, this isn't your church. This is our church. Well, you know what? In our church, you know, our past, we're all, remember, we're all autonomous. We can do whatever we want. But I would call other guys and go, you know what? I heard you use vanilla wafers for the Lord's Supper. Shame on you. Hey, if they want to do that, that's their business. We don't. We're not going to. You, 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 don't, you don't change things by comparing things with something else. And it doesn't mean it's right. Well, yeah, you know what they do. You know, they're big. That doesn't make it right. Any Christian, according to these scriptures, especially verse 15, any Christian that sees another Christian fall into sin is responsible to go to them and help, watch now, help them repent. To turn from that to turn right. To turn from what they're doing and turn to do the right thing. Did you ever help a person when their car broke down? You jumped out and helped them push it? Or did you drive by and go, look at that. Look at that guy. Look at his wife steering. You, my kids would beg. They'd see somebody broke. Dad, please, we want to help. 
Then these little kids would jump out. All three of my boys would jump out. Man, they just pushing their hearts out just because they wanted to help. And isn't it interesting that we judge? But it isn't according to what we are. We want them to be right, but we're not right. We want them to repent. Oh, but my sin's different. Verse 16 says, if they refuse that correction, we should get other godly Christians involved. Why? It's a family. I would get home. It's been a while. When I first got here, I worked another job, and Amy taught the kids. And I'll tell you what, that teaching four kids all day, I, I, wow. And so I'd get home. I'd be on the outside. She was in prison. I was out of prison. And I'd get home, and I could just tell by her countenance something was wrong. And I would say, I didn't say what. I always, it was who. Because I know something happened. It just depended on the who. So I would say who. It wasn't always the same who. There was one who that was less than other who. But it was always a who. And she you know, and I, I would say, did you talk to them? You know, I'm, I'm just, right? You know how that is, guys, you get home. You used to tell your kids, my kids now go, you know, I, I know what you mean now when you get home. It's like, just give me a minute. You know, because, man, you get home and they all just jump on top of you. And Amy's ah, ah! It's like, give me a minute. I would get home and she would say, yeah, I talk to them. I don't know. Wait, you, you need to talk to them. And so I would, you know, hey, what, what happened? You know, what did you do? Why did you do that? What were you thinking? Just trying to figure it out. So then I'd go to her and go, this is what this who said to me. What who say to you? And it would pretty much coincide, and so we would deal with it. If it gets really bad in a church, verse 17 says, it's all about the person changing. It, it, it's not a threat. It's the church praying. It's the church saying, hey, we want to keep Acts 5. I'm sure there were other things that went on other than Ananias and Sapphira telling a story about what they gave. I'm sure that Ananias and Sapphira, what they did would not destroy the church. But God was sending a message. Two times in that chapter, Acts 5, pertaining to that story, it says great fear. Some churches have discipline just to send a message to other Christians. I don't want to do that. Yeah, next week we're having discipline. And everybody goes, uh-oh. I, I just think you ought to choose. So I make it hard for you. My, my philosophy is I make it hard for you not to choose. When you come here, you are hammered every time. I mean, you go, oh, well, take it easy on us. Hey, I do take it easy on you. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So five out of two, nothing. So when you're here, it's hammer time. I mean, remember that? Remember that? I'm sorry, I'm aging myself. Every member of this church and every member of every local New Testament church ought to agree to be under the authority and discipline of their church. That, that's the point of it. If we see another Christian in sin and we don't do anything about it, we're not helping them. Here's your blank. Church discipline is to what? Here's what I think. This is my, you can put down what you want, but here's what I think. That's why I left you a little bit of space. What's, what's the point of church blessing, church blessing and church discipline is to what? Here's what I think it is. Fix the problem before God does. Acts 5, Ananias and Sapphira. 
You think Peter went, Peter's talking to Ananias. Don't you think Peter went, wow, when Ananias went down? I don't think Peter went, yeah, so there. I think Peter went, wow. So Sapphira comes in. Peter gives her the same speech. He, look, we, he doesn't know what's going to happen. By the way, if I'm Peter and I'm nowhere near, because I think he's a great man. Oh, he was a sinner. You're a sinner. So I don't think Peter's thinking, yeah, I hope God strikes her down too. I think Peter's thinking, wow, God killed her husband. He's not going to kill her. Whoa. I think Peter was in just as much fear as everybody else. Number two, sin not only in the church is a family matter, but sin, number two, in the church needs to be, I just have sin needs to be what? Judged. 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 Sin. Sin. Not compromise. You could be headed that way. Hopefully the preaching will correct that. But if not, if you go all the way into sin, then we as a church, as if it's individual, of course, we have to keep you as a member from violating God's word. I mean, I'm pretty sure God hates sin. I'm pretty sure we're supposed to. So we, we as a church practice discipline, if you will, when a Christian does something that God says is sin and they won't see it as sin. First John 1 John 1.9 says, but if we confess our sins, confess there is the word that means to say the same thing. If I see my sin the same way God does, it's going to bother me. So that's why we judge it, because it bothers God. We start, he says, you go directly to that person. If they don't respond, you take a witness or two. The goal, the goal always, the goal always is to get them to get right. Not to attack them, not to belittle them. Man, you need to be right with God. Blessed is the man. Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Why do we discipline? Because God's word calls sin, sin. Hey, I'm going to go through these real quick. Four things. Number one. Why do we discipline? Because God calls sin, sin. We're not going to take that lightly. Number two, so the whole church sees that sin is serious. We used to do this. Man, I can remember a long time ago. We had young girls, not a lot. We had young girls get pregnant. They weren't married. They came up here. I talked to them and said, you can tell the church or I'm going to tell the church, but they're going to find out. It's better if they find out now. I'm not punishing you. Hey, I wasn't here six months. The main family of this church, his daughter got pregnant. Out of wedlock. Remember we used to say that? Now it's a badge of honor. Still sin. You're old-fashioned. You're welcome. I sat with them. Where Johnny and Scott are, that was a room. I sat in that room. Remember, I told the, the guy they were going to get married now because they had to. I said, this isn't your biggest problem. He said, it isn't. I said, no, going to hell is your biggest problem. He goes, well, I don't want to do that. I go, well, you know what? You don't even know what you've done is sin. And so you need, and I'm directing my thoughts to him because I'm a, she grew up in a church. Her uncles were missionaries. Her grandparents built this church. And so I'm assuming this guy's a heathen. He needs to get saved. 
You know the story, pretty soon she's crying, what's wrong? I'm not saved, I've never been saved. Well, no wonder you're so stupid. No, I mean, you know this is wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, you need to tell the church you got saved because that's what matters. I didn't even have them deal with the, the pregnancy. And then the parents got mad because she got saved. Sin is sin, number one, don't take God's word lightly. Number two, show the church that sin is serious. Number three, we do it to restore the sinner. To bring the sinner back to where he ought to be, number three. Number four, we show the world that we fear God. The world ought to know that we don't tolerate sin. We got to go quick on this one, can we? Can we? Can't save it. Discipline is for number three. Discipline is for what? And this, we've talked about, we've dealt with it. Discipline is for purity, for purity. And the first we want the guilty party to respond correctly and quickly. They don't have to. You don't, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to be right with God. You don't have to be born again. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. But I'm going to tell you what God said, and I'm going to tell you what I think is right, and I'm going to tell you what we're doing as a church, and then you have to make a decision what you're going to do. Tell it to the church. Don't say announce it. We need to treat them correctly. And then he says, if they still aren't what the church is, disconnect them. I mean, we... Right? We would. I don't want them, but we will. We, we'll boom. Hey, they're not a member. Well, we have a file in all y'all. If Look, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm trying to scare you. If you say, oh, I've never joined this church, we have a file on you if you come here. And if you are a member, we have a file on you. We have a file on you where you came from. We have a file if you quit coming. We put a date that you quit coming. Because our Constitution says if you're not here for six months, you can't vote. So if you come in and go, I'd like to vote, we look at your file. If I go, Amy, check that because I don't think they've been here for a while. And she checks the file and it says five months. I go, okay, you can vote. If it's seven months, nope. We, we have to do that. I don't want to do that. Who's got time for that? But we're trying to do what the Bible says. The prodigal son, I'm done, I'm done. Watch. The prodigal son was accepted by his father. Because he admitted his sin. The older brother didn't accept his brother. Because he wasn't judging righteously. Hey, you know that, right? The older brother, I'm not going in. The dad has to go out and go, what? What are you doing? Yeah, you know what he did? And the dad should have said, you know what I've done? Gave him a ring, gave him shoes, gave him a robe, gave him a fatty cat. Man, he admitted his sin. You ought to admit you're being a baby. Because that older brother was. Hey, we just need to grow up. You know? So, oh, yeah, the pastor. Wrote. Just love God, serve God. We got to go. Father, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for truth. Thank you. Boy, Lord, thank you for those times that we think, wow, that could be me. And we ought to know that. We ought to be scared. There ought to be times where we're scared. Help us to fear you like we should so we'll live right. In Jesus' name, amen.